Good morning, church. Trust you all are well and blessed. I have an announcement to make uh, that next week, Sunday, the 1st of November, we'll be having a special general meeting and SGM, the 1st of November, after the 10 a.m. service at the church. So directly after the 10 a.m. service, we're going to go straight and convene into the, uh, the meeting. We'll be discussing basically the plans for the church till December and also into the new year, and also deal with a few uh, things that COVID and the national lockdown prevented us from doing as we would normally do as uh, LBC members. So we're looking forward to seeing you all next Sunday and uh, the 1st of November again after the 10 a.m. service. So if you can come at about 11 o'clock, if you're not going to worship with us at church and worship online and then come through, please do come about 11 o'clock. We'll be for about 15 to 20 minutes long. Pastor and elders will just want to, to address you and to let you know a few things uh, that uh, we want to do and let you be aware of it. Amen. I pray that you'll be blessed as we do that. So the song for this morning is, There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, because of who you are, and oh, come to the altar. And I pray that you'll be blessed as we get into a time of worship. But bow your heads as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing our first song, There's Not a Friend Like the Lowly Jesus.
Hello Church, it's good to be able to be with you again. We're looking at the secrets from the Psalms, but I want to make a proposal to you. The proposal is that we start coming back to church again as soon as possible. I'd like to suggest the first Sunday in November. It's a communion service and we want to move from this kind of recording service to you coming to the service. Following all protocols, uh, following whatever by that stage the president has announced. But many churches are meeting. We have seating uh, properly arranged in our facilities and we have sanitizing we have a record of you coming, we have temperature taking. So I want to suggest to you on the first Sunday in um, November, which I think is the 4th, is that correct? The 4th at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Um, you don't get in front of your television screen or in front of your computer or on your phone. You come to church. Can you say amen to that? And there will be a special time of gathering and we're going to be looking at the Psalms, the secret of the Psalms. And uh, I would really like to encourage you to do that. We'll try and follow up uh, to see uh, what recording, and we will have something definitely of that service. There might be additional recording, I'm not exactly sure. But if you'd like to send any message to Pastor Byron, uh, or to Zah, or to somebody as to uh, what you think and feel, we would really like to encourage you. I trust you can say a big Amen uh, as the Lord has led us through this entire lockdown period. And I think it's time now for us to start looking at the secrets of worship, the secrets of gathering together, not forsaking this, the gathering of ourselves together, as is the custom of some, says the book of Hebrews. So for today, which is the last Sunday in October, I want you to turn with me to a messianic psalm. In other words, a psalm that talks more about Jesus than any other psalm. And that is Psalm 22. Psalm 22. I'm going to be speaking from the first 11 verses, but I want to read little extracts for the sake of us getting a feel for the whole psalm. Listen to these words which I'm sure you've heard before. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Then verses 7 and 8. All who seek me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in the Lord. And then verse 14 and 15. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax and it has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot's herd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and you lay me in the dust of death. Verse 17 and 18. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothing among them and cast lots for my garments. Then these very encouraging words. That's why I'm talking about the secrets of the Psalms. Verse 27 and 28. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before Him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and He is King over the nations. Now, Today, I want to speak to you about help with your hurts. Dr. Lloyd Ogilvie, an author, 
says this, Underneath, we are all burning cauldrons of mixed feelings. Every single one of us feels so deeply. Trevor Hudson, a South African preacher, said, You can rest assured that at least one person sitting near you in church is a pool of tears. C.S. Lewis, a very famous British author, who spent most of his life as a single man and then had an incredible marriage to somebody, an American, later in life, only to discover a few years later that his beloved wife had cancer. And then he watched her slowly deteriorate and eventually die. He said these words, God whispers in my delights, speaks in my problems, but shouts in my perplexities. Now the encouraging word that I have for you is that if you are hurting deeply, it is natural and that you, if you will acknowledge it, can find the help and the encouragement of God. Let me give you just a few suggestions. Number one, it's important to express your fears. It's important to express your fears. David expressed his fears here in Psalm 22 verses 1 to 2 and it is here that Jesus turned when he was on the cross. And he said, My God, Father, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. I cry out by night, and I am not silent. Now I've got a very interesting message to share with you. Though David felt deserted, he wasn't deserted. And though Jesus felt deserted on the cross, in fact, he was not deserted on the cross. And though you might feel deserted, you are not deserted. Let me give you a few ideas. Number one, we see the Father's presence at the cross from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. Darkness came over all the land. It was God who showed himself. We hear the Father's love in Matthew 17 and verse 5. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. We read of the Father's plans being fulfilled in Matthew 27 and verse 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. bottom and the earth shook and the rock split open. Who would have thought at a time Jesus expressed such deep, deep feelings that in fact he would see such amazing demonstration of God. May I just share this verse with you, Revelation 3 and verse 20. Here I am, I stand at the door and I knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. This is a Middle Eastern knocking on the door. You don't just knock on a door in the Middle East. What you do is you call and they recognize your voice. Maybe right now you can recognize the Lord's voice speaking to you. Your fears need to be expressed. Number two, the facts need to be explained. Now, while fear speaks about deep feelings, we need to take our feelings and our facts in our brain and bring them together. 
First about God's identity as to who He is and what He is doing. In 22 and verse 3 it says, You are enthroned, O Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. Do you know that there's a little song we used to sing in Sunday school? God is on the throne and He will remember His own. What David is saying and what the psalmist is saying, no matter how you feel, as deep as that may be, and sometimes as painful as it may be, your feelings don't take God off the throne. He remains on the throne. And in fact, he says, you become the praise of Israel. In the book of Habakkuk, that beautiful book which Pastor Byron shared with us some while ago when we looked at the issues of faith, it says in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verses 18 and 19, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go up on the heights for the director of music on stringed instruments. Sing! God's identity, God does not change. You change, I change, circumstances change, the world changes, but God does not change. Second thing about Him is His reliability. In verse 4 it says, In you our fathers put their trust, they trusted in you, and you delivered them. God is absolutely reliable, no matter what the circumstances are. The other thing about God, the facts about God, is His credibility. In verse 5 it says, They cried to you and were saved, and you they trust, in you they trusted and were not disappointed. Do you know that no matter what happens in the world, People come back to the very fact that God is God. Years ago, there was a rampant atheistic communism that spread through the world. Do you know that when the doors were opened again for people to be given the option, people flocked back to the churches? Louis Pilar, now in his 80s, been preaching all over the world said these words, in an age when God is supposed to be dead, more people than ever before are seeking Him. Isn't that wonderful? The facts explained. While this song has very deep feelings, it also has very important facts. This is to help you with your hurts, because hurts are not just going over and over and over and over, but it is keeping a balance between the facts and the feelings. Then it's very important to expound even on your feelings. Even with all the best facts in the world, even with all the issues that you might be uh, taking from the scriptures, all the verses that even I might be uh, quoting to you, it's good to expound on your feelings. First of all, feelings are deeply personal. Verse 6, listen to this, might be some, a description of some of you, and it might be what some of you are feeling right now. I am a worm. Ever seen a, a worm on the ground? Looks terrible. It's on the ground. It's looks absolutely helpless and he's got to the place where he says I'm a worm I'm not even a man I'm scorned by men I'm despised by people though you feel like this I want to tell you that is deception it's not true you are not a worm you are made in the image of God and it is for you that Christ came 
In Romans, in Psalm 8 verse 5, which I shared with you a few weeks ago, it says, You were made a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you were crowned with glory and with honor. That's personal feelings. There's also public opinion. Psalm 22 verses 7 to 8 says, All who seek me mock me. They hurl insults at me, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in the Lord. Haven't you had that sometimes? Maybe something has happened and people in your neighborhood have mocked you and people have just wondered and they've said, you know, this person goes to church and this person believes in God. How on this earth can this happen? Sometimes it's even a community or a public opinion. A primary school pupil was per performing very poorly at school. And... Uh, very poor test results, disinterested in the classroom, unmotivated, until one day a very astute guidance teacher took the trouble to ask the little boy, why is this happening to you? The little boy said very quickly, he said, I'm stupid. Who told you that you're stupid? Why do you say that you're stupid? He says, my mom tells me I'm stupid. My dad tells me I'm stupid. My family tells me I'm stupid. I've always been stupid. The guidance teacher went and counseled the family, showed the error of what was happening, spoke to the boy and told him he was not stupid, and then gave further personal instruction until eventually that boy was performing at about three-quarter level of the class. You see, sometimes public opinion, what people have said to you, sometimes from childhood or sometimes in power structures, can sometimes affect you and you feel like a worm. Go back to God. Go back to God. There's help for you with your feelings. It's important to look back at your birth. Go all the way back. Look at your birth. In verse 9 it says, Yet you, Lord, brought me from the womb. Oh, wow! You, Lord, brought me from the womb. Wow! Look back over your life. Verse 9. You made me trust him even uh, from my mother's time. Oh, wow! Look back again at your faith. Verse 22 and verse 10. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Is there a secret in this psalm today to help you with your hurts? To get beyond your hurts. Maybe they don't go away immediately. But to get a bigger perspective. To get a wider perspective. And I pray that the Lord, by His Holy Spirit, would help you to overcome. Amen.